Lincoln Railer Football on 96.3 FM and WLCNOnline.com is brought to you by Brow Incorporated, Fist Reef Food Mart, Community Action Partnership of Central Illinois, The Carpet House, Castle Manor Support of Living, Ricky Coward Trader Funeral Home, Rick Ham State Farm Insurance, Lincoln IGA, Town and Country Bank, Eaton Corporation, Lincoln College, Flay Terranel Salon, Lincoln Heating and Cooling, Future Stars Lincoln and Impact Studio, Dean Leaf Plumbing, Heating and Soft Water, Lincoln Printers, Jane's Hair Salon, Bright Ideas Screen Printing and Embroidery, Kathy Denny Realtor at Worth and Associates, Mama's Arcade Cafe, Stufteria Pizza, Headline Salon LLC, AG Farms, Best Western Plus Lincoln Inn, and by Sharon's Auto Repair. Ivan Moore wears the number 18, 5'5", 185, and uh, he's a senior, and he'll kick it away from his own 40-yard line, and we get it underway underneath the Friday night lights here at Eisenhower, and it's going to come down to Putnight at the 13 to the 15. Putnight looks for blocking at the 20, changes his pace, and he gets about to the 21 before he's stopped. There's a swarm of Panther players there to take him down. He, he hesitated if he would have gone either way, but dedicate he may have had an opening there. Froze, grabbed by the waist, pulled straight down. And the Panthers arrived on the scene. It'll be first and 10 for the Railers at the 20 yard line and junior quarterback Garrett Isles will run the show for the rail splitters. In there for the rail splitters, it looks like we've got uh, number 12 that's and that's Andrew, Andrew Yon. He's a sophomore and out on Metallica, he's out split wide to the left. On, on the wing at the top, that's going to be another sophomore, Alex Linares. Probably playing in, in place of Cameron Cook, who is on the bench this evening. Both Cameron Cook and Will Cook not active for this game. Brent Metalco got back to the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be 10, second and 10 for the rail splitters. You're right, Benjamin. You got some players missing tonight, so a lot of changes in there for Coach McDonald in his fourth year here at Lincoln High. Isles looks to the sideline. The play from Coach. This Panthers team not, not huddling, just waiting, playing this new almost amoeba defense where they stand and wait and then react right before the ball is snapped. Isles looks along the line of scrimmage. Now he comes up under center. In motion goes Metalco. Hands off. No, he rolls out. The left-hander tipped away and down on the turf. Good Got blitz there by the Panthers. They were able to knock the pass down. That ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. Chris Dong was the intended receiver. All he got was a shove in the back from a Panther player for his troubles. So it'll be third and ten for the rail splitters. A big play here for Lincoln. They've had trouble... Uh, Getting up field, and uh, yesterday, or pardon me, last Friday night, they were able to score a couple times touchdowns at tight at halftime, but then the second half they had their problems. Isles going to run out of the shotgun. The Railers need a good start. They, they seem to almost spot the opponents a touchdown and then find their groove. Isles, he's got some time, and he throws it along the sideline, but it's incomplete. Just a little bit over the head of the sophomore Lenaris. Lenaris out there, number 21, so now it's going to be fourth and ten for the Railers, and they're going to have to punt it away, and they've had troubles with this because they try that pooch punt. The, the, the rugby punt, the punt pass kick all in one play. Right. It is, it's designed to give the quarterback the option if he sees the room to run, but sometimes when you play against these teams that come in off the corner so fast, that option's not there. Woodland back deep uh, for the Panthers. Isles rolls to his left, throws along a sideline and complete to Metalco for the first down and he rambles down across the 40 yard line to the 42 yard line. Big play there. He got he got three, four yards after the catch, after contact was brought down as he was running away. That was a must have play and the Railers have it. Up to the 42 yard line of the Lincoln Rail Splitters. Clock on the move, 10-10 remaining here in the first quarter, and the Railers with a big play there to continue the momentum here early. There are three passes just in that first set of four downs. Usually Coach Mack likes to go 50-50. Yant's going to split here to the near side. Isles up under center. 
And he's got a man in motion. Here's the handoff and a good gain. That's Chris Dong up to the 48-yard line goes the senior, Chris Dong. That's what I said. The Railers need that good start. Find their legs. This is very reminiscent of what we saw a week ago back at Hanlon Field. Good start. Good confidence from this Railer group. He got some good blocking off that right side from Connor Neitzel and Sage Conradi. So it's going to be uh, second and four for the rail splitters. Isles comes back onto the field with a play. Almost at midfield. Boy, the, the, the decision to throw on that fourth down looking better and better Dynamic. and better as we go on. You've got Yacht to the near side, Metalco in the slot. Receiver split wide to the left. Dong's the fullback. Now Metalco goes in motion. And they hand it off to Dong, and he's knocked back for a loss. Knocked back. He probably got hit about the 47-yard line. Big, big number 72 for the Panthers. Big number 73 for the Panthers was the one who made the stop there. Jonathan Wills. Uh, he's a six foot two, 290-pound senior. Pretty much all purpose. He's also the center and the long snapper. You'll be seeing him all night. But yeah, you when 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 a shorter back runs into a man almost 300 pounds, Newton has already decided how that. Carry is that is, that's it. right, and they, but all they gave him the line of scrimmage, so it's going to be uh, third and four for the rail splitters. Yacht to the near side. Now that wing formation, Metalco in the slot here on the right side. Man in motion. Isles rolls out. So he wants to get rid of it. He does, and he's got Pudnight along the sideline. Dies for the first down. He's going to be short, but he got up to the midfield strike. That was that was a case where the the Panthers showed pressure and then came straight up the middle. Garrett Isles taking a pause, keep staying cool under pressure, creating just a little a little drop pass to Pudnight. Almost fourth to and the first a deuce down. for the Railers. 7:59 left first quarter. You're listening to WLCN. 96.3 FM and you're listening to us on WLCNonline.com. Ball right at dead center near hash mark 50 yard line. Ethan Kunkel center up over the football. Where's the number 54? They're in tight on this formation. Nobody spread out. Railers in a power eye. Isles takes his time. Try to pull him off sides. Now he'll go back up under center. Hand off Metalco and no running room there, and he's dropped for a loss back about the 47-yard line. It looked like he stepped on a foot. He went to cut to go to the outside, go off to the left. I think he lost his footing maybe on a cleat, and he just went down. Yeah, he didn't even get hit. As Ben said, he just went down. So now it's going to be first and 10 for the Panthers at the 48-yard line of Lincoln with 7.28 on the first quarter clock. Defensively for the rail splitters up on that front line, you've got Braden Tanner, Seth Gleason, Connor Neitzel, and Ethan Neitzel. And here come the Panthers on the run, spun down across the 40-yard line. The tackle for Lincoln made by Braden Tanner. That looked like the big back that, that uh, looks like a very, very big back. I'm trying to figure out exactly it could be Woodland. which they one it was. The fullback, uh, number 17, maybe. He's a, a very big man, whoever that is. Yeah, that's number 17. Second down, and he's fighting for the first down, and down. he's got it. Braxton Woodland, he's 6'2", 250. He's a senior, and he looks every bit of 250, if maybe not a little bit more. And on the tackle for Lincoln, uh, a couple of guys were there for the rail splitters. Colton Wright, Colton Grant, and Seth Gleason. Again, dealing with some substitutions on the defensive side of the ball. Some some new players getting some more playing time tonight. First and 10 out of the shotgun to Horty. He's going to keep it himself this time, and he's up to the 30. Makes a nice move to the 25, to the 20. Sidestep to the 15, finally taken down at the 10-yard line. On the tackle for the Railers was Ethan Kunkel. That was, and Kunkel had to come all the way across field to make that tackle. Some good downfield blocking by the Panthers and and this Bobby if this is what we're going to see all night that was a good run tough to bring down and remind you again that Dehorati is only a sophomore yeah he is if, if we're going to have to see this for three more years crazy remember that well there's a penalty and they're going to bring the football back I, I didn't see what the penalty call was. We're going to see it here. I, I did notice that Doherty threw the ball when he went down. They're saying illegal, illegal procedure. procedure. So Two he, people he, moving at once, perhaps. So he was throwing that ball in disgust. I wonder what he was doing there. 
Well, There's it, the flag it, way on the other side. It, neg it negates a, a good run. Negate, put them put them inside the red zone. Put them almost inside the ten. Yes, and they move the football back to the uh, Lincoln forty-one yard line. So it'll be first and fifteen and for the Panthers of Eisenhower out of the shotgun. Dohorty hands it off to his big man out of the backfield to the forty to the 35 30, 25 20, and he's finally wrestled out of bounds by Brent Metalco. Yeah, that's that's Braxton Woodland again, and he stiff armed a Lincoln defender, and arm tackles are not going to work tonight. Woodland what? is just too big. How, what's the size on him? He's 6'2", 250. Wow. And he can run. And he looks like he may have had a full dinner before tonight. I, I think 250 may be a little bit light yeah. for him. Out of the shotgun again, first and 10. Doherty hands off to another. That's number nine for the Panthers. That would be Salat Amnur Adin. He is a junior, 5'8", 170. The he Panthers showed. have yet to pass tonight. They've, they've been all run, all on the ground. And you know they can pass. Doherty looks to the sideline. He's got the play. I say they haven't passed and watch him go to the air right here. This is the kind of yep. luck that I bring. He's got the arm on it. They're at the 13. Second down for the Panthers, and again, they'll run it out of the gun. Two receivers to the right, one to the left, and they hand off again. And that running back is up to the 10 that's, before he is taken that's down. That's Al Nuruddin again, the junior. The, the smaller of the one-two punch looks like Braxton Woodland, the big, the big fullback, coming back into the game. He's been tough to break to bring down all game, Bob. So they give Dehradine a couple of runs, and now the big boy's back in there. Third and five for the Panthers. Beautiful night for football. Fourth, is, uh, fourth game of the year. Oh, it's just it's it's cool, but not too cold. You can be out here in short sleeves. Caleb Doherty, and this time he hands off. That's Woodland running again. Back, straight oh. arm, and he's finally run out of bounds. I think that was another yeah, running that back. Was, that was Cedric Cunningham. He is also a uh, he's also a senior, 5'11", 210, and that was just a great use of, of, of a stiff arm. Oh, yeah. Put him right, put the railer defender right into the turf. So it's going to be fourth down now for the Eisenhower Panthers here from Decatur. You're listening to 96.3 uh, FM, WLCNonline.com. The Raylor defense is trying to hold here at the seven-yard line. Gut check time for this defense. They have been bending, not breaking. Doherty out of the shotgun. Of the it. He lobs it in the end zone, and it's too, too deep. Far. Good coverage there by Zach Hoodnight for the rail splitters. Hey, that, that ball may have been may have been a good head and shoulders too high. The, yeah. the receiver didn't have a. Even if he would have caught it, I think he would have come down out of bounds. You're right. Hoodnight. Uh, it was right in his chest. So the rail splitters uh, stop the drive, and it'll be first and 10 for the Railers with 4.59 left in the first quarter. Ball spotted at the seven-yard line. I'm kind of surprised the Panthers didn't try and draw the rail splitters off sides, play a little bit of a mind game right there. That's, it, that's, that's more in your head, backs to the goal line. Surprised. Kunkel over the ball now. Isles comes up under center. Man in motion is Metalco. And they hand off fullback. I that's probably going to be Dong. We'll have to check and see. And he was buried underneath a, a, a mountain. It was, it Dong. was Dong. He was stopped at the six. So that's about a yard loss for the rail splitters. He ran right into what looked like Jonathan Wills, the, 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 the center of that defense for the Eisenhower Panthers. Big man. So it's second and 11 for the rail splitters. 290 pound senior. It's tough to run inside against this Eisenhower team. The rail splitter defense held up. Let's see if the offense can do something here. Yacht split here to the near side. Metalco's in the slot. Isles looks, fires. Oh, Metalco almost picked off. It was through the hands of Metalco. Then it was almost picked up. So now it's going to be third and 11 for the rail splitters at the seven yard line. We got lucky there. Yeah, that and, and it, it was it was a, a strongly thrown ball went right through not only our hands but their hands. They weren't expecting to have a chance to have an interception there. Couldn't hang on to that bullet. So third and eleven for the Railers. This is where they made the big play last time. And it was it was rolling to the left. Garrett Isles, left-handed quarterback, giving him that strength there. 
There's Jan again to the near side. Receiver split wide to the left. We got a man in the slot on the left. Out of the shotgun is Isles. He's going to roll to his left. Looks, fires, and incomplete. Intended receiver was Zach Goodnight. So now we're deep trouble now with fourth down on the seven yard line, fourth and 11. Gary Lyons had to throw that from two yards deep in his own end zone. The, the Panthers brought a considerable amount of pressure. If, if Putnight would have caught it, probably had some running room. Most of the oh, yeah. Eisenhower defenders were in the end zone. Just got to put it on the, put it on the money. He catches that, he's got a first down. Yacht to the near side. Dong comes out in the slot. Metalco on the left side in the slot. Isles out of the shotgun. He punts it away, and he gets away a good one. End over end, and it's being picked up at the 39. I think that's Woodland, and Woodland's still on his feet, still on his feet on the right side, and he goes in for the touchdown. James Woodland, wide receiver, 6'2", senior, 190 pounds. There is a flag on the play. We'll have to see what this is going to be. It's, it's back where you would think that it's going to be a, a, a penalty on the return team. Against the Panthers. Yeah. He picked that up at the 39-yard line, took it in, but the holding penalty is going to bring it back. A block in the back, hands to the face, something that is that is going to negate the first, what would have been the first score in this game. So the splitter defense is going to have to hang on again against a tough Panther ball club. The Panthers have had success running the ball. They've thrown once, and it was that that throw into the end zone, probably designed to be an alley oop. Just jump put a ball, yeah, yeah, just yeah. send them back into the corner. If you miss, you miss out the back. Uh, but this this Panthers team has had success. Although when Lincoln stiffened, they st they stiffened when they had to, with their backs to the goal line. They bring the football all the way back to the uh, 40 yard line with 3:53 left in the first quarter. Well, I got a chance. We haven't been able to run too many spots. Want to thank some of our fine sponsors. Longtime sponsors, Grau Incorporated, the Fifth Street Food Mart, and Community Action Partnership. And here comes the Panthers out of the shotgun. They hand it off to Woodland. Woodland's got five yards, looking for more. He's got the first down. He's at the 20, the 15, the 10, the five. South there wasn't going to stop him. Did they? Did he get in? Touchdown. They're giving him the touchdown. James Woodland on the touchdown with 3:45 left in the first quarter to give the first lead to the Panthers, 6-0. Was that James or was that what appears to be his brother Braxton, the big back? Who was that? That was Braxton, Braxton Woodland. He's he has been he is the force, you know, 6'2", 250 senior, and he is fast. He's carried the load, strong, Ooh. tough to bring down. The arm tackles are are not going to cut it tonight. Let's see if we can pick up the number on the kicker. Ivan Mora gonna kick it. Ivan Mora will boot the football. I've got him listed here as 18. I see him on the field. Maybe that's just my eyes. Yes, that is 18. It's up and it is off to the left, so it's no good. The score remains 6-0. We'll be back after this. Bobby V and Benjamin Yant back here at uh, Decatur Eisenhower, a beautiful football field, and the Panthers score on a 40-yard run by Woodland, and uh, he shows a lot of speed and a lot of strength, and the Railers just weren't able to make any tackle there. Yeah, this is... This is, this is a, a ball carrier that is not going to come down. If you bump him, you're not going to be able to grab his shirt and pull him down. This is form tackling. Get your, get your head up, get your shoulders square, hit him and bring him down. Ivan Mora going to kick it away for the Panthers. Back deep for Lincoln is Brenton Metalco, Zach Putnight, and Chris Dong. Dong wears the number 40. Metalco is number one, and Putnight is number two. Putnight got the first kick and brought it out to the 20-yard line. Let's see if we can improve on that. Here's Mora's kick, and it's going to come down to Putnight, this time at the 17 to the 20. He's up to the 25, looks for running room. He's got some along the sideline to the 30, 35. Stays on his feet, down to the 40-yard line goes Zach Putnight. Very nifty running there by Putnight, uh, Benjamin. He got some good blocking, and too. And he, he dedicated his first kick return. He hesitated. He had two ways to go, didn't take either this time. He dedicated, went right down the sideline, probably got away from two or three Three Panthers with outstretched arms. Good return right there. Great field position for the rail splitters. Near side hash mark. And the Railers have a chance now to bring it downfield as Kunkel comes up over the football. Yant the near side, the sophomore. Metalco's in the slot. Dongs at fullback for the Railers. Isles takes his time. Now he comes up under center. 
They are stacking this box. Look at how many men they have. Metalco's the got the handoff. He's across the line of scrimmage, and he fights his way across the 45-yard line. Down to the 46-yard line goes Brenton Metalco, showing some good desire and heart there, getting six-yard pickup. Eisenhower's putting eight in the box. I think daring Lincoln to throw the ball, either anticipating run or showing, hey, we're coming right after the quarterback for Lincoln. So it'll be second and four for the rail splitters. 3-10 left in the first quarter. Isles still in the huddle, talking it over with the rail splitters. Now Kunkel comes out. Yant's going to stay in tight this time, coming out of a power of Iowa formation. Isles will come up under center. Second and four for the rail splitters. He's going to hand off. Metalco looks for runner room, nothing there, and he's dropped for a loss back at the 43-yard line. About a three-yard loss there for the rail splitters. Metalco tried to go off the left side and the tackle made by Braxton that, Woodley. That, that, that hole just disappeared almost as soon as, as soon as it opened up. It's going to be tough to get off the edge. This is a fast team. Braxton Woodland showing his speed on the offensive side and right there with that tackle showing his speed on the defensive side of the ball as well. Benjamin Yan, even the yard markers and the uh, first down markers are in orange tonight <laughs> in the spirit of the fight against leukemia. It is. It, I'm telling you, this looks awful lot like a Lanfear team with this black and orange, but it's for a good cause. In motion, Metalco. Isles fakes the handoff, throws it up the middle, complete to Dong at the 40. Dong on the move at the 35. He jukes a player and he spins and taken down at the 30-yard line goes Chris Dong. And nice play. They, when you when you put eight men in the box, if you have the time to make the throw and you get on, you get it on target, you get that kind of a result. Railers marching downfield now, first and ten at the Decatur Eisenhower 30-yard line. Two minutes left in the first quarter. And the Coach Coach Mack sticking almost to plan. He is almost even pass and run. That's the second completion for Isles tonight. Seems that both of his completions are big, picking up a lot of yards for this rail splitter offense. Good game plan for the rail splitters. Trying to pick up who's split wide to the left out there. That the looks like number 80 for the railers. I don't believe. We'll have to check and see who that is. Here comes the railers. Metalco's got the football. He gets to the line of scrimmage along the sideline. Looks like he rambled on up to the 25-yard line. That was a time where they had the size of the field. They had they went to the wide side of the field, and they uh, they, they were able to get around the corner, picking up about five yards. According to the roster, Bob, Kobe Bottrell? Kobe Bottrell. All right, we've seen him before. We'll see what year in school he is. He's the guy splitting wide to the left. He's a junior. They list him at 5'10", 125, but I think he's a little bit bigger than that. Some of these kids getting a good meal from the last time that they were they were uh, they were weighed. I know Thursday nights the team eats together. I think everybody eats pretty well. Stacking up a lot of guys on that left side. Metalco's the lone guy on the right. Yant, now Metalco goes in motion. They pitch it. That's why they stacked it over there. Metalco along the side. He dives for the first down. It's going to be close. Let's see what the spot is. Yeah, they, I think I think Coach McDonald's found something that he likes out on that left side of the Panther defense, stacking it with blockers. You get blockers downfield, and we've got a first down railers. Well, you saw him put Dong and Yant over there on that side, and then Metalco came from the right side, pitched it to him, and as you said, had those lead blockers and took it for the first down. Just nose of the football, just across the 20 yard line. First and 10 for the rail splitters. They trail it by six with a minute seven left in the first quarter. They've been doing a good job, this railer offensive line controlling the line of scrimmage. Very much like last week, you'll see three, four plays in a row blocking downfield. Unfortunately, sometimes um, the defenders get in the backfield. Metalco in motion again. I think they handed it to Dong there, but that yeah, closed up pretty up. quick. Yeah, Chris Dong swallowed up the minute he got that ball. Big number 73, Jonathan Wills, 290 pound senior, closed that middle. They plug it up when they try to go off that left side. And he lost maybe a yard there, so it'll be second and 11 for the rail splitters. We're in the red, 30 seconds left first quarter, and the rail splitters may let it run out. Now Isles goes in. He's going to have to get a playoff, or they'll be penalized. You don't, you don't want to move back at this point. This is the same way they lined up when Metalco ran it for that first down. They bunched that on the left side. 
But Metalco comes in motion. He's got it again. They ran the same play again along the sideline. Goes Metalco, and he may have picked up a yard or two. They keep the uh, the clock running because he didn't go out of bounds, and that's going to end the first quarter with the score: Decatur Eisenhower Panthers six, the Lincoln Rail Splitters zero. We'll be back after these. Don't forget, we've got Scott Kirby and the Jake Johnston Cheap Seats live Saturday morning sports show featuring Joe Ryan. It's going to be at Joe Ryan Country Financial downtown. If the if the sidewalk doesn't keep everybody up, Coach. Andy McDonald going to be the guest tomorrow, certainly talking about this they're, game. They're beautifying downtown Lincoln, but it doesn't look that way right now. <laughs> Eventually, it will become beautiful. Yes. This is, this is going to be a game that I, I think the coach has seen some good things so far. The, the, the Railers seem to have good control at times of the line of scrimmage. They They're do. right now poised third and, what is it, Bobby? I can't see it. It's uh, third and nine at the 19. As you said, Ben, uh, Coach McDonald splitting the plays up even. He's got Yant split wide to the right here to the near side. That's Bottrell. On the left wing, it's Putnight. Man in motion is Metalco, and Isles wants to throw. He's got to get rid of it. He does Metalco. He gets back to the line of scrimmage, and that's it. Forward motion stopped at the 19-yard line. Metalco looked like he just hesitated. He caught it, juked the first defender, and then just froze. I wonder if he's not limping a tiny bit. It looked like maybe an ankle or just a, just a, a cramp or something. He literally stopped dead in the middle of the football field. He's a tough kid. He's taking a beating tonight. And I, I think he was still looking for some room, but the, he just stopped and there was a couple of big guys there. So it'll be fourth and nine for the rail splitters as we just start this second quarter. The Panthers lead it 6-0. That's Garrett Isles' third completion on the night. Now three for five. The, uh, the Railers have, have tried just, uh, no, he's, he's more than three for five because I've got it wrong. Eight passes. He was under a lot of pressure there. Isles going to operate out of the gun here on the fourth and nine at the 19. He's got Dong back there with him. Isles has got a little bit of time. He's got to find somebody open. No, just wasn't there. The intended receiver was Zach Putnight, and now the Panthers will take over on downs at their own 19-yard line, where it'll be first and 10 for uh, Caleb Doherty and the, uh, and the Panthers. It's gotta be frustrating. They were making good progress running the ball. The Panthers seemed to adjust to cut off that outside run when the, when the Railers would bunch. Isles passing that last one. He, he had a man open, just couldn't connect. In there defensively now uh, for the rail splitters. He's been in there before. Is uh, number 39 uh, Colton Grant for the Railers out of the shotgun. Doherty. They hand off the running back. Finally taken down after an eight-yard pickup. The guy that made the hit was Chris Dong for the Railers. Salat Al Nuruddin again, the the junior ball carrier, 5'8", 170. He is the he's the counter to to the big running back Braxton Woodland for the Panthers. Second down. Railers had a man there, but they couldn't get him down, and now he stays on the run. He's got the first down across the 30, about to the 32-yard line. Looked like Nuruddin again. You're they right. Will, they, will, they will run them in, in shifts. Braxton Woodland, who, who, who scored the touchdown last quarter, uh, playing both sides, playing, playing a, a, he's a big impact player. He's out there, but he's lined up closer to the line of scrimmage and not in the backfield. More like the tight end on the right side. Orochi, now he hands off, now he keeps it. He's up to the 35, to the 40, 45, still on his feet. Very nifty sophomore. Yant had a hand on him. No, now he's going to go to 35, 30. Oh. One man to get him. And, and that's uh, going to come back on the crack penalty. Back and the Railers finally wrestled him down inside the 20. There's a Railer shook up on the play, but there was a penalty. Somebody probably got shoved yeah, in the back. Yeah, Bobby, that was a that was a that was a crack back block that that was it was close to the play. It was not completely removed from the play, but he hit him from behind, blindsided, and I can't see the the Railer player, but he is he's still down on his knee and and waiting for the trainer to come out. She's came out. She's with him. Uh, one of the coaches is out there. 10.04 left for the half. The Panthers lead at 6-0 as they attend to the rail splitter that's out there on the field. There was a flag on the play, and we'll have to wait and see what happened there. It was a big hit. The, 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 the railer player came up, off, feet up off the turf, came down on his side. It looks like 20... Could be uh, Tanner if it's 22. He's the uh, defensive end for the Railers. Now checking in for the Railers is number 66, 
And that's his... Uh, is it 66 or is it 55 Connor Knights? Maybe it's Knightsel coming it back. It looked like in. Connor Knightsel coming in. 22. I think that's Tanner, Braden Tanner. Yeah, yeah, Braden Tanner shook up on that, and he was... He's walking off right now under his own par. Maybe he just had the wind knocked out of him. I, you you got to hope it's the wind and that he didn't get his bell rung. That was a that was a violent collision and took him off his feet. Canceled out a, a big game for Eisenhower. First and 10 for Eisenhower, just short of the midfield stripe. Doherty out of the... gives hands off to the big guy, Woodland, and Woodland fights his way up across the Lincoln... Uh, 47 to the 47 yard line across the 50 goes Woodland. Eisenhower is, is successful in spreading out the field, keeping the, the, the Lincoln defense from being able to stack eight men in the box. And then when you've got a big ball carrier like Woodland, who comes off shaking his wrist, he, he maybe maybe took a helmet to the hand, That's a helmet to thinking, the wrist. Yeah. He's, he's walking off, maybe a stinger. It's funny bone. That thing stings when, when you bump it yeah. on a helmet. Helmet might have got him. Here they come, second and seven, the Panthers out of the shotgun. And he's, oh, good pressure. Nice play by their one of the Railers. That was Sutton. Yeah, Eric Sutton, big Beautiful sack. play. Knocked him down at the 45, Benjamin. He looked like Lawrence Taylor. Arms yeah. spread out, yeah. swallowed up the quarterback. He came right in off the side. And that's that's the momentum boost that this Lincoln Railer team needed. Now looking at a third and long for Eisenhower. He came to play tonight. He was ejected from a game uh, earlier this year. And I think it's toughened him up. He's, got, he's learned some more respect for the game. And he came to play tonight. I talked to him yesterday after practice. Said he, he was looking forward to this game. Wanted to prove himself after having to sit out last week. Third and 15 for the Panthers. Big stop there by Sutton. Out of the shotgun. Oh, it looked like he was offsides. He was. Looked like a wide receiver out there on the left side was offside for the Panthers. Got a big jump. They're going to push him back. The Lincoln taking the momentum. This is a game that is all about momentum. Bobby, you've covered it long enough. You've watched from up here, watched from down there. When, when you get a momentum swing like this, the Railers need to take advantage of it, not let up a big play. They've got the adrenaline going, and it's third and 20 for the Eisenhower Panthers. 8.36 left for the half. The Panthers lead at 6-0. You're listening to 96.3 FM out of Atlanta, Lincoln. Dehorici, the sophomore, out of the shotgun. He's got the snap. Rolls to his right. He's got time. He's got that position. Oh, a big there hit go. there Alex, by Alex uh, Linares, the sophomore. 21 sophomore linebacker. That is a textbook tackle. Looked him right in the middle of the back. Number nine. Bang, hit him. Nuruddin. Al Nuruddin. Salat Al Nuruddin. Uh, the, the, the big running back for Eisenhower. Braxton Woodland still on the sideline. Now he's coming in. He, he went out several plays ago with what could have been a stinger to the hand, a stinger to the wrist. Benjamin Yanni's coming back on the fourth and 20. He's still going to line up at that tight end position on the right side. 7.50 with the clock on the move left in the first half. And they're going to run it out of the shotgun on the fourth and 20. Bob, you said Doherty had a, had a gun in warm-up. We'll see. And now he's going like to punt it away, end over end. And it's going to bounce in front of Metalco, and he's going to let it go. And it's going to roll dead at around the 18-yard line where it's down there by the Panthers. That's got to be a defensive win for the Railers. They, they, they almost were, were looking at Eisenhower on the doorstep. Now they're going to take over. Their ball still just down six points. They stopped him twice so far. Once was right there knocking on Heaven's door. And here they got him uh, to punt the ball away. So it'll be first and 10 for the Railers at the 18-yard line. Clock has stopped. 7.33 left in the first half, and the Panthers lead at 6-0. This is, this is a defense that we saw very similar to what we saw last week against Springfield High School. Ben, don't break. This week they've been, they've avoided giving up the big play. It was it was just that big play, that 40-yard run from Braxton Woodland, 345 in the first quarter. That's the only score we've had. That's the only time Eisenhower's been near. Kunkel down over the football, the center for the Railers. Now here comes Isles under center. He's got a man in motion. That is Putnight. Putnight strings along along the right side, makes the turn, oh. and then he's hit hard. Oh, he was. That was. That was another. This Eisenhower team came to play. I can't see. He tried to make the turn, Putnight, but it just. Yeah, he's hard to pick up who the tackler is he over got, there. He got hit hard. There was a wall of Railers. One Eisenhower Panther made it through, and it collision football tonight. This is this. No one is going down gently on this field, Bob. They both came to play. 
Lamonte Williams it was what we're being told. He's a uh, he's a sophomore, 5'11", 180 pounds, plays wide receiver, plays defensive back. So it'll be second down for the rail splitters. They gave Pudnight a yard on that play. Clock is stopped at the 726 marker first half. Railers trail it by a touchdown, 6-0. Isles is going to operate out of the shotgun. Number eight, the junior. He's got a man in motion, and Dong ran across in front of him, and that disrupted the play. Illegal procedure Illegal on the rail procedure. splitters. Maybe having two men move. That's usually that's usually the culprit when you when you put men in motion, and uh, yeah, just somebody not set. Well, it's orange here tonight in the battle against leukemia. Caden uh, DeHorty, the young brother of the quarterback uh, for the Panthers, he's being honored tonight in his fight against leukemia and we wish him all the best a lot of orange down in the crowd you can you can see decent crowd here at eisenhower high school it's gonna a be beautiful night for the football though clock on the move now 7 13 left for the half that that penalty is not going to help this team that pushed him back a little bit now closer to the goal line that i think they'd be comfortable with put night goes in motion Isles hands off second guy through and he's wrestled down by two of the Panthers. It was Metalco. Metalco had one man to beat and he couldn't beat the man. It looks like uh, maybe Zach Hill? No, we're not being told. It's, it's, it's Makai Peoples who is a sophomore. So now it's going to be third and 16 for the rail splitters. That was just good discipline on behalf of the of, of the Eisenhower defenders. They stayed home. They didn't follow the fake. Made the tackle. Looks like it's time for a Brian Isles pass. Garrett Garrett has, has the wide side of the field off to his left. He's a left-handed quarterback. He's got Bottrell and Yant over here on the left side. He's going to roll that way and look. He's got a little time. There's Bottrell. He's got it. Bottrell at the 19 made the catch with a pickup of uh, three yards. Got him, got him just back above the original line of scrimmage. There were a number of, of Panther defenders chasing after Garrett Isles. Now one of the Panthers down on the field. He was one of the guys that made the big hit on Bottrell, and uh, he's not getting up off the turf. Uh, it, it, looks, it, it looks like a, a knee or an ankle. He was kicking the turf. Big number 44. Drew Faxton, 5'6", 200 pound, and he is a sophomore as well. And it looks like there's an injury timeout on the field, so we'll take a timeout and we'll come back after this. The Panthers lead the rail splitters 6-0. Railer football brought to us by our friends Kathy Denny, Realtor at Worth Associates. Give them a call, 737-1729. Fourth and nine for the rail splitters at the 19. Isles wanted to punt. Now he finally gets it away, and it's just going to roll up and be down at the 29-yard line. So great field position now for the Eisenhower Panthers it was at uh, Lincoln 29. That rugby punt rolled out to his, to his left. There was nowhere to go. Tried to turn around. He went to get it off to kick the ball, but was, was bear-hugged by big number 17 Braxton Woodland and just pulled down the the, the punt nicked his toe and went 10 yards Woodland's everywhere he's a superman they down it at the 30 so it'll be first and 10 for the Panthers there and the defense for Lincoln's got to go to work again Braden Tanner off to the left side there he's the uh, defensive end on the left Woodland playing almost a, a tight end position Doherty out of the shotgun Hands off. That's number nine for the Panthers. Salah Anur Dean. Nice tackle but for the Railers out there. He had a pickup of about a yard, and that was Pudnight, Zach Pudnight, with a nice open field tackle. Pudnight coming up, playing defensive back. Saw it, good form, single, no help. That's that's the kind of that's the kind of tackle, kids, that the coaches want to see you make all year. Pudnight's a junior. Where's the number two? He's five nine, and he's got to weigh more than 130. Well, maybe maybe we'll put some quarters in his pocket, get him up to 150 pounds. At least a couple rolls, yeah. Out of the shotgun, second and eight for the Panthers. Man in motion. The Ortiz on the man in motion's got the handoff. I think that's number one. He's on the right side. They trip him up and finally stop him at about the 21. The guy that finally made the stop was Ethan Kunkel for the rail splitters. Colton Lockwood, he is a 6'3", 200 pound, and that would make him a freshman. No, that would make him a junior. 2016 yeah. makes him a junior. I'm not a math man. They're making I, us do math. I did, I did not graduate from Lincoln Community High School, so I'm not the goodest in the math, or apparently the goodest at the English, Bob. <laughs> yes. Wait. <laughs> 
<laughs> but we're all into forgiveness. <laughs> Dehorty. Third and one for the Panthers. Now he's got a man in motion. He now he hands off. He's keeping Whoa. it himself. Big hit. And it looks like they've got the first down across the 20, that being the Eisenhower Panthers. 4.15 left in the first half. Railers trying to make a defensive stop here, but it's going to be first and 10 for the Panthers. That was Braden Tanner who came over from his outside linebacker spot to make that tackle. He's a tough kid. He got tomahawked on that one play. Got the wind knocked out of him. He's, right He's back, back in, in there. there. Caleb Dehority, the quarterback. Big, strong kid. He hands it off. Looks like Al Nordine. Good so tackle there tackle. by the rail splitters. That's Chris Dong. Took him down at the 21, so a loss of two for the Panthers. Slot Nordine has been doing a lot of the carrying here. We saw Braxton Woodland carry the load early. They've moved him up ever since that Eric Sutton sack. You've seen Woodland more close. He's closer to the line of scrimmage, I think, picking up some blocking duties. It's been Al Nordine who's been carrying the ball for the Panthers. Out of the shotgun, second and 11 for the Panthers. At the Lincoln 20. Now Doherty's going to keep it himself. Sutton trying to run him down. And now he's hit. Stays on his feet. Another railer there. Finally wraps him up and he's taken down. I think that was Lenars, but now he stays Lenars on his feet. Lenars didn't take him down. He was there, but he didn't take him down. And almost down to the goal line goes to Orochi, so it's going to be first and goal for the Panthers. I thought they had him. The, the, they had him. They had him stopped. If the Railers were waiting for a whistle, it didn't come. This is why This is why you say it. From junior football league all the way up to varsity football, you play till the whistle blows. The, the, the refs true. just didn't blow the whistle. They had Doherty stopped. Second, or pardon me, first and goal for the Panthers now. It looks like at about the two-yard line. Doherty out of the shotgun. Fumble. Oh, bad snap. And here comes a couple railers, and they got to stop him. They finally do get him down about the 12-yard line. Chris Dong in on the stop. 39 also there for 39. The Colton players. Grant. So that was a big 10-yard loss for the Eisenhower Panthers. Bad snap. Do Doherty played it right. He went back, squared himself, and then he was it was two railers in his face. Tried to stiff arm his way out. He put he put his hand in the face of Colton Grant, but Chris Dong was there to get him by the legs. A good gang tackle make up made up for the for the poor tackling the play before. 39 and 40 for the rail splitters. Now Doherty out second and 12. And he's going to pass now. Good pressure by the Railers. He lost one into the end zone. Incomplete. incomplete. Through his hands. Good pressure there. 76 and 39 Colton, for the Railers. Colton Grant was right on Doherty's heels. And Seth Gleason coming in a one step quicker. We may have had a sack. Uh, there, there were two. It looks like Alex Linares and uh, Garrett Isles back playing defense. Now Doherty bending that knee as you would if you had a cramp or if you, 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 you took a took maybe a cleat to the shin, Bob? I, and I thought it happened on the play before. He looked shook up on that, so that may, uh, may have been from there. So with 2.15 left in the first half, Eisenhower leads at 6-0, and the Panthers have taken a timeout. We'll be back after this. Tomorrow, join Big Daddy Jim from the Lincoln Country Morning Show Drive, Jeff Number 2 from the Classic Rock Experience, and Lisa, the Fix 96 Prize Girl, live from 11 to 1 at Bullseye for Boobies at the Wishbone, located in the lower level of the VFW on 5th Street in Lincoln, with all proceeds to benefit the Susan G. Coleman Breast Cancer Awareness Foundation. This event begins at 11 a.m. and is a kid-friendly family event. And here come the Panthers, third and 12, Another a bad, bad snap. Snap Another on bad the ground snap. and Doherty just dives on it and a couple railers pounce on him. Tanner was there. And Eric Sutton was the guy that jumped on him. Eric Sutton has been has been playing on fire. I think that one week off has inspired him. Since that failed tackle, Eisenhower has done nothing but move back there. Now back almost the, the, the line of scrimmage now on the 20. They were, what, first and goal from inside At the, the, the five? Yeah. They're, they're moving the wrong way for Eisenhower, right way for Railer fans. You spoke of the momentum. Here's DeHorty. He's going to have to pass. He's going to throw a home run ball for the end zone. Good coverage by Isles, and he almost caught it. Just over his head. If, 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 if DeHorty would have, would have thrown that ball short, the receiver for, for Eisenhower had him boxed out. Very, 
basketball play look, uh, but he just threw it over the top. Strong arm, as you said when we started tonight, Bob. Strong arm, but sometimes you got to dial it back, have a bit of the touch. There were railers all in Doherty's face. And that all happens with a minute 38 left in the first half. Panthers still lead at 6-0. Uh, I think they scored at about the, what, the 355 marker? The three, 345 left in the first. It was one big run. Braxton Woodland tore off scored, broke a couple of tackles. Since then, this Railer defense has stiffened, not not allowed points, moved moved Eisenhower back from the footstep of the goal line. Bottrell splits to the near side. Metalco goes in motion. Isles uh, hands off. Second guy through. He's still on his feet, and they never did take him down. They finally blow the whistle up around the 27-yard line. That's Chris Dong. Chris Dong running hard. There is a flag, either a hold or where it was thrown, perhaps even a face mask. They're marching the the railers back so it is going to be a hold on the green and white great effort there by dong but uh it's going back a minute 30 left first half panthers six rail splitters zero so far a, a bit more run looks like nine pass plays and we're looking at 11 runs although you got to discount one or two because the because of the penalties that, that negated the play coach mack likes to be 50 50 when you've got some some momentum like this railer team does pushing forward controlling the line of scrimmage i think that i think that you you've seen some success with the run don't change what it what ain't broken that's true, and uh, Railers now backed off uh, to their own 10-yard line, where it'll be first and 20. Clock on the move, minute 17 left for the half. Bottrell here to the near side. Railers out of that uh, wing formation. Stacked a little bit heavy to the left side. Now they got a man in motion, that's Metalco. They hand off to Dong up the middle, and Dong's got some yardage. He fights for five up to the 15-yard line. These, these refs are not quick on the whistle. This is the third play where forward momentum has been stopped, and, and I, I hope that we didn't see what I think I saw where oh, Chris Dong gets up, uh, you know, the, the fear when you have that pile, when you have that rugby scrum, somebody may get hurt while, while the play is, is coming to its end. That's true, and we don't want that to happen. We need Chris Dong in there. Timeout on the field, 52.9 left for the half. Panthers lead the rail splitter 6-0. We'll be back after this message. Okay, we're out of that timeout. Bobby V and Benjamin Yon here at Decatur Eisenhower bringing you the ball game. 52.9 seconds left, first half. Second and 15 for the rail splitters at the area. 15-yard line. I think that timeout's just got to be Eisenhower hopes to maybe get the ball back with a few seconds left, take a couple of shots into the end zone, especially this close in their own territory. Hoodnight went in motion, got the handoff. He got back up to the line of scrimmage. He may have gotten a yard out of it. And here's here's another timeout by Eisenhower. They're going to they, they want to get the ball back this half. Doherty's shown that he can throw the ball. Accuracy not there, but the arm strength certainly is. Two runs by the rail. They've, they've gotten three yards of that penalty back, perhaps. Well, uh, remember, after the game tonight, stay tuned as we throw things back to Jeff number two in the best classic rock and roll around. He'll be with you till midnight, but the party continues until 4 a.m., and that's the best country known to man. Because when you're tuned in to WLCN 96.3 uh, FM, it's Country by Day and Classic Rock by Night. The best of both worlds. We've got some sponsors to thank. They are, they are the reason that we can bring you Lincoln Railer football here every Friday night. Mama's Arcade and Cafe. They've got great homemade breakfast and lunch. It's served at 513 Pulaski Street, historic downtown Lincoln. Give them a call, 735-1443. Stuff to Ria Pizza. They're right there on the Logan Street curve. Painted Railer green and red open seven days a week. Carry out, drive, and call them 732-3100. Ben, they're finally getting me off the streets January 1st. I'll be 66 in a couple days, and I started working while I was 10, so they're finally <laughs> going to get rid of me. Well, Miles, we got a man in motion, Metalco. Metalco's got the football, and he can't make the turn. Nice tackle made by the Panthers back around the five-yard line. Uh, play originated at the 14, and uh, Metalco just couldn't make the turn. And those, those two timeouts, it, it is going to be... I'm surprised they're not calling a timeout here. Fourth down, Lincoln's going to punt from their own end zone, but he, depending on how the clock runs... Fourth and 21 for It looks like Lincoln's not even going to have to run this play. No. And even that if, confuses me, Bob. Even if they take the five-yard penalty. Yeah. They're not, they're not lining up. They're not coming over center. We had, we had two timeouts. 
with, with, with 40 seconds to go. And we had no timeout with 22 seconds to go. That's the end of the first 24 minutes, and it remains Panthers 6, Rail Splitters 0. The uh, Panthers scored with 3.45 left in the first quarter. That's all the scoring in the first half. We'll be back after these messages. We'll send it back to Paula Kodak. <laughs> 